Okay, good evening Walthamstow Voices. Lovely to see you all and welcome back to 2021. Sure, we're all glad we've made it this far and here we are back on Zoom. So, let's start as we always do with our warm-ups. Up we get. Now then, first thing to think about is your posture, okay? So, obviously my camera is set up for me being at the piano. But look, feet comfortably apart, arms by your side so that you're well rooted. This part of your head here, the top of your head, is touching the ceiling. Not the front of it, you're not leaning your head back, but the back of your head is touching the ceiling. And I want you all to just enjoy that feeling of tallness. Okay. Now this is actually really, really, really important, this idea of posture. It's important for us as singers, but actually it's important for you in daily life. And if you are especially one of our younger members, getting used to holding your body correctly will make you feel a lot better when you're a lot older. Okay? So getting used to a good posture is setting you up for the future. And in terms of singing, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breathing in for four beats, right into the bottom of our diaphragm, filling the whole of our body with air and enjoying that feeling of fullness. When we breathe in, our tummy will come in, our chest will expand, our shoulders will expand but not go up, and it's from there that we're going to be able to create the support on which we're going to sing. So, in for four. One, two, three, four. Hold for four. Two, three, four. Out for four. Two, three, four. In for four. One, two, three, four. Hold for four. Two, three, four. Out for four, two, three, four. In for four, one, two, three, four. Hold for four, two, three, four. Out for eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In for four, one, two, three, four. Hold for four, two, three, Four, out for twelve, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. In for four, one, two, three, four. Hold four, two, three, four, out for sixteen, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. In for 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Hold for 4, 2, 3, 4. Out for 24, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, now then, I've made a big point about posture just now because it's the foundation of the sound we make. So all our further exercises, all our further exercises are about developing that. So we stay in the same posture and we breathe the way that we were breathing there. Neo eo 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 is about warming up the nose and the upper lip. And it goes like this.
good, good. Right, next one is about two things. It is about warming up the tongue, but it is also about being able to execute a descending scale with every note there. So have a listen. La, 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 la. Now there's this naughty little note after that that's here. And that just needs to point up. It's so close to there. Okay? Now then. La, 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 la. We're going to do it slowly, so listen. La, 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 la. Let's do that. So remember, posture, posture, posture. And this really comes into play now, doesn't it? When we do these descending scales. Because it needs to be a supported, confident, la. Right from the diaphragm. It's not a shouted la. Can you hear the difference? Yeah? One goes there. La! And I can do that for maybe 10 minutes and then I will be. Okay? Or I can support my sound. I can make it rich. I can fill my head with it. I can do a lot less work and actually get a lot more resonance. La! So here we go, all together. Let's go together, here we go.
now let's have one here. right to the top of the gentleman's register. Here we go. Standing tall, open mouths, everyone together, here we go. girls, here we go, just the girls. just the sopranos just the sopranos and that is going to include I would like both girls from the youth choir to do this as well both choir girls from the youth choir and the sopranos you drop the jaw you open the mouth and you let the sound float out here we go <laughs> find that sopranos did we all make that let's do it once more sopranos and youth girls here we go Take a seat. Take a seat. Now then. That note is a C. That note is a G. More importantly than that, that interval is called a perfect fifth. That interval is called a perfect fifth. The reason it is perfect, it is neither major nor minor. We don't know whether it's major or minor. We need another note, the third, to tell us that. It therefore sounds very open and very medieval. Okay? We don't know whether it's major or minor. One. One, let's sing that, and one, five, one. It's a hunting horn. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah? One, five, one. All 
right? Let's sing that together. Ready? And one, five, one. All right? Now then, the other perfect interval that we have is the fourth. Again, we don't know if it's major or minor. We need another note to tell us. It is therefore perfect. One, four, one. Ready? And one, four, one. So. One, five, one, one, four, one, one, five, one, one, four, one. Let's do that. And one, five, one, one, four, one, one, five, one, one, four, one. Okay, you got that. I want you to now think back to this exercise. That is a descending major scale. That means that it's a major scale going downwards. Okay? That note is one. And that note is one as well, because it is the next one in the series. We don't call it one again. We call that an octave. Now you'll have heard me say octave often. But that's what it is. It means the next one up. So what I told the young people earlier today is that an octave is always very easy to remember. An octave is always easy to remember because it's the beginning of somewhere over the rainbow. So, somewhere. Ready? Let's sing that. And. Somewhere, which gives us octave. Let's do that. And octave. All right. So we have one. We have the octave. We have five and we have four. Octave five, four, one. Let's do that. And octave five, four, one. Again. Octave five, four, one. Now then, we're going to do that a few times. Again and again and again and now then the note on which you have finished should be this. All right. So, let's pick some victims. Now, Bin Bin, I'm going to pick on you first 
because your daughter's already been picked on today, so it only feels fair. Basically, if you've got a member of the youth choir in your, in your household right now, you are going to get picked on. Right, bin bin. We're going to do that. Octave, five, four, one. And you're going to keep doing it until I stop you. Okay? Here we go. Ready? One, two, off you go. Right, now then, so, here's the first thing, five, four, sing that for me, right, now then, can you all hear that five and four are very close, now what Bin Bin was doing was this, <laughs> octave, five, Four, one, yeah? So we have to really, really make sure, have to really, really make sure that we control that descending interval. Octave, five, four, one. Off you go, Bin Bin. Ready? One, two, here you go. Ah, but you're not singing four. You're singing three. You're singing octave, five, three, one. You're singing that. And I want this. You see, you can't just sing the word three and, sorry, sing the word four and think that it is actually four. Okay? Okay, you ready, Bin Bin? Here we go. One, two, three, go. No, you keep going to the third. It's higher than that. Oh, right. <laughs> Alia, stop laughing at your mother. Show her how it's done. One, two, three, go. Octave, five, four, one. Yeah, no, but Bin Bin, I'm getting Alia to do it now. Ready, Alia? Three, and. Good. Can you hear that pointing upwards there, Bin Bin, yeah? On the four. Right. You two together. Let's see. Let's see. Here, you two both together. One, two, three, go. Now then, can everybody hear that these two ladies now are almost singing the same thing, but not quite? <laughs> now then, if we can't tune in to ourselves and to one other person, then how are we going to tune into an entire choir? Yeah? So this is what we need to start thinking about. Because it's not just about being able to sing our lines in isolation. It's about being able to be in tune with each other. And you see, if I have this happening, just on a melody line, if I then try to have something like this, um, 
we're still out of tune with each other, we'll get this. And that's sometimes what we get. That we get these kind of, you know, quarter tones around the tune. So, for instance, you two are really lucky because you can actually do that together. It doesn't matter what note you start on. The point is the placing of those intervals. And the reason that I've picked five and then four is because five has to be absolutely perfect and then four needs to be close enough to it. So you have to think up. Five, four, sorry. Octave, five, four, one. Okay. So I'm gonna pick on someone else with that now. I'm gonna pick on uh, Christine. Hi, Christine, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Good. I was feeling fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like being put on the spot. Right. right. It's going to be this. Octave, five, four, one, go. Now, we're going to do it over and over again until I stop you. Ready? One, two, three, go. Octave, five, four, one. Octave, five, four, one. Octave, five, four, one. Octave, five, four, one. And she's there, look. She's still there. Okay, that was nicely placed, Christine. That was nicely done. Now then, Christine got that absolutely right. And I could see and hear that she was thinking about where each of those notes was placed each time. Okay? She was really thinking about that. Before she sung it, she was thinking, right, that, yeah, making sure it was there. And that's... When I'm talking about looking after every note, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, often when we're learning pieces of music, we just focus on, oh, what note comes next, what note comes, you know, and trying to get it right and trying to learn a whole line of music without actually thinking about every single little interval, every single little note, okay? But that's actually what we've got to do. So, Christine, that was really good. But you must now apply that, that, that thinking that you did. Because what I'm doing here is I've taken away everything else. There's no words. There's no sheet in front of you. We were literally just focusing on four notes. But it requires that amount of brain power and concentration for every single note. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Good, good, good. Right, let's have... Right, let's have... Um, Wendy's looking really nervous about this, so I'm, I'm going to just go straight there. I'm just going to go straight there and, uh, and put her out of her misery. <laughs> now then, Wendy, how are you doing? Good, good. So, it's octave, five, four, one. Sing that for me. And... Octave, five, four, one. Right, good. And now you're going to do that over and over and over again. Make sure that your first note is accurate. Oh, think about the first note even. Because I can see you thinking about all the other notes. Did you think about the first note in the same way? Okay? And once you get good, just as I did with Christine, just do it over and over again until I stop you. Arc, two, three, go.
and stop. And she's still there. Good. Now, that took concentration, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Especially the first note, I forgot about that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and this is what I am trying to get across. But also I'm trying to give you some kind of idea of the mechanics of the music. So that when we talk about intervals and when we talk about distances and we talk just about that major scale, then we're able to really understand that and that will just help everything we're doing. Okay? Mark, off you go. Three and. Up, dip, five, four, one. Up, dip, five, four, one. Up, dip, five, four, one. Okay, and now the two of you together. Here we go. One and. Up, two, five, four, one. 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 Right, good. Now then. Did everyone hear that the first one they did together was pretty manky, right? And as they repeated it, they tuned into each other, yeah? They were still both singing, but they were listening to each other. Or if we're honest on this occasion, Wendy was listening to Mark. Yeah? yeah? But actually, did, did you, how would you describe what you did to adjust to be with Mark? I heard him. I you was were, just listening to him. Yeah. And it's a different kind of listening to what we think of as listening. You know, we often say, oh, I'm listening to you, which means that I'm listening to what you're saying to me. You're telling me a story or you're telling me that something's happened or you've told me that something needs to be done. Okay? This is a different kind of listening. It's an inner ear listening. And it's one that allows us to keep singing, but to respond to what we're hearing. Here's a really good example. This note is G. Uh, and in a uh, in a C major chord, it sounds like this. Uh, in an E minor chord, it sounds like this. Uh, Now, the way that I sang my second G was different to my first G. Let me see if I can go from there to there. And I will try to keep the same G. And you will hear that the G suddenly becomes out of tune. Listen, that's the G. suddenly sounds a tiny bit flat. I didn't change the note. I have to change the colour of it because I have to listen to the other notes around me. Listen. Can you hear that? And in fact, I can take that through more harmonies and change that note ever so subtly by what I hear from my inner ear. Yeah? 
the same note, but I just change ever so slightly. And this is what that listening to each other is about. It's also what makes this method of rehearsal so difficult. Okay? Because many of you do not have someone else with whom you can sing and with whom you can rehearse. Okay? So let me pick on someone who's on their own. It's Kelly. Right, hey. Hey, Kelly, how we doing? All right, good, thanks, Tom. Now hey. then, just like this. Octave, five, four, one. Off you go, and. Good. But look, you've slipped down. Can anyone tell me which note it was that caused him to slip down? Wave at me if you think you can. Kelly, do you know which note it was that you were sending too low? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Maybe the last note? One? Yeah, it was. It was one. Mm. It was one. Listen. Octave five, four, one. And you were doing this. Octave five, four, one. Octave, five, four, one. Each time it was slipping down that tiny bit. So think of your octave somewhere. And remember, you're going back to the bottom. Octave, one. You just happen to be going through five and four. Octave, five, four, one. Okay, off you go. Think about every single note. Three, and. Octave, five, four, one. Octave, five, four, one. we are in tune that time. Yeah, I can kind of hear it on the last one. Well, that's the thing. Once you do hear it, once you do hear it, you can't not hear it. Does that make sense? Once you, once, it, it, it's almost about knowing what you're looking for, knowing what you're listening for, yeah? And once you've, once you've, found it, once you know what that sounds like, then actually you start to hear it all the time. It will actually ruin your life because it means that you will get to the stage where you can never listen to some kind of like, you know, school play or school choir thing with all the kids kind of ah, ah, ah. and you'll realise that half the pop music that you used to listen to becomes totally unbearable because the guy with the guitar whining away into the microphone can't sing in tune for Toffee and it's really painful to experience. But once you've got to that stage, you realise that you've reached a higher level of being because you can hear being in tune. Okay? But it does take that much concentration. 
Um, I'm going to pick on Graal's household just because I'm mean. All right. <laughs> okay, Graal, off you go. Octave five, four, one, go. It's the octave with you that you need to look after. Octave, five, four, one. You need to just keep it brighter. Ready? Three, and. Octave, five, four, one. You. Octave, five, four, one. Right, growl. Growl. What's going wrong here is that you were, just like Bin Bin was trying to, you are singing the number four as a word, but you are not singing four as an interval. You are also trying to sing a third. So you are actually singing this. That then becomes... an exaggeration of it but that's what's happening because you're doing so do this for me five four one go still slightly flat on your four. Five, four. This is what I want you to do, Graal. I want you, when you sing four, to point your finger up in the air for me. Ready? And we're going to do this together. So look, this is how it will look. Octave, five, four, one. Octave, five, four, one. Like that. Do that for me. Ready? Three. And I want to see that finger. Ready? Here we go. One. And. Octave, five, four, one. Did, right. Did, 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 did she put a finger up there or not? No, you didn't. You've got, I'm saying I want you to physically point up. I want you to physically do that. Just like I did. Watch. Octave, five, four, one. Okay. And. Okay, but you're still singing three. You're still singing three. Right. Sorry, I'm completely terrible. I've forgotten your name already, but could you sing it for me, please? And see if you've got this. Ready? Three, and. Yeah? Off you go. Think of that octave and think of somewhere. Reach up and don't be afraid of it. Sit on top of it. Go. That's a lot better. Yeah, so look, you two can work together on that as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that there is that on the recording easily. In fact, Mark, I'm about to move on to um, a bit of 
note learning for the different parts. So, if you can just remember, Mark, that whatever stage we're at, we're about, um, yeah, we're about nearly an hour in, about 50 minutes in or so, and your first timestamp is going to literally be that exercise for everyone to do. Okay, so I'm going to record it down now so that you can all work with it. What I will do is I will sing and play it. I will then just play it and then I will carry on indicating it for you. Okay, ready? And then you can just do that over and over and over again. Okay? Right. Now then. Here's going to be a bit of line learning. Okay? You don't need to look at any copies. You don't need to worry about anything right now. All you need to do again is use your ears. And if you were in an earlier rehearsal... Don't show them anything yet, please. Okay? I'm going to start with the altos. Now then, if you are in the youth choir as well, the altos at this stage will line up with the seconds. Okay? So, altos. Have a listen to this. again. Ready? Alright, Alto, sing that with me please. Ready? One, two, three, and... you go altos. Have a listen. One, two, three, four. Right, have you all got that? Everyone got that? Good. Because what I'm now going to do is I'm going to expand that. So this is now for Mark's time code, this is the whole alto line that I want you to learn this week. This is the whole alto line. And it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Sing that with me, please. Here we go. One, two, three, four.
Okay, altos. I'm going to play it. I'm not going to sing it. Just give me... A quick moment to have a sip of water. So altos and youth choir seconds. Here we go. One, two, three, go. done the altos first because I'm now going to do the sopranos but I will still play the alto line okay now then have a listen first it sounds like this sopranos and firsts sounds like this one two sopranos listen <laughs> to draw your attention to the very last bit where it goes up a bit higher because at the end of the first line you have a held note listen okay sopranos even though everything else moves you don't same note okay right so this is your starting note with me sopranos here we go one two three and Sopranos. Now then, that's the alto note, that's the soprano note. I'm not going to sing, I'm just going to play. Here we go. One, two, three, four. what I've been doing with the girls you already know your line because it is simply an inverse amalgam of the two it sounds like this ready one two three four Ooh.
gentlemen. Here we go, with me please. Ready? One, two, three, four. Okay, boys, I'm going to play, I'm not going to sing. One, two, three, four. Okay? Just like that. So what I'm now going to do is show you how this fits together. I am just going to play your notes, all of your notes, on the piano. Okay? Now that's where the boys start. Altos and seconds. Sopranos and firsts. And it sounds like this. Ready? One, two, three, four. Right. I'll be an alto and a second first. Let's all sing together. Boys, altos and seconds, sopranos and firsts. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Sorry, I forgot which line I was going to sing with. Sorry. Right. I'm going to sing with the altos and the seconds. That's the boys. That's the altos and the seconds. That's the sopranos. Here we go. One, two, three, and. Just like that. Now then, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm now going to be a soprano stroker first. Okay, we're all singing together. There's the boys. There's the altos seconds. There's the sopranos firsts. And I'm singing with the firsts, the sopranos. We go one, two, three, four. same thing and I'm going to sing with the boys. So that's the boys, that's the alto stroke seconds, that's the sopranos stroke first. One, two, three, four.
All right. So that's all three parts together. So, why did I start this evening banging on about intervals and about fourths and fifths? Well, it's because of this. These chords have got intervals in them. And in fact, if you look at the relationship between the men's line and the alto stroke second line, you have fourths over and over and over again. Okay? If you then look at the relationship between the men and the sopranos, when it goes up higher, you have fifths. Now then, it's important that our fourths and our fifths are perfect. And that's why I've been working on this idea of descending scales and keeping things up. But here's the next thing. Right at the beginning, I said, that's a perfect fifth and that's a perfect fourth. And I explained that the reason that they're perfect is because we don't know whether they're major or minor. They need another note to tell us which it is. Well, look. If we look at that second bit when I had you going higher, where I had you doing this. Now then. There's the boys. There's the sopranos. And it is the altos that give us a minor chord. That's perfect. That makes it minor. On the next one, that's another fifth. It's perfect. The middle note, the alto note, makes it major. So instead of having we now have and because of the way this is written at the beginning where I said we've got fourths between the men and the altos it is the sopranos that tell us whether the chord is major or minor. Okay, because that is exactly the same as that, just voiced differently. So instead of having, we have, and why am I being so tough on this? It's for three reasons. Firstly, all I want you to do for next week is to have learned those lines that I've just taught off by heart. So you can just do them. But the second reason is that I want you to really, really think about that, those lines, because it's really easy to just go, yeah, and let it slide down and let it be all over the shop. If we get this really good, if we get this absolutely in tune, it sounds great. If we kind of get a bit of a St. Barnabas cluster chord, it won't sound so great. Yeah? So we really, really need to be exact. And the third reason I've made a big deal about it is that it's A, something that you can apply to everything we do, and B, there are people in households right now who are going to be able to rehearse this against another part. And you need to know that you're listening for it to be in tune and you have to work together. 
So you have to know what you're aiming for and what these intervals sound like. Okay? And it goes right back to octave five four one. And next week we'll make sure we understand how to get a third in tune. So let's do this again. Boys, altos, sopranos. I'm not going to play anything other than your lines first and then we'll do it a couple of times over with me playing the piano through as well. Boys, alto stroke seconds, first stroke sopranos, one, two, three, four. Once more, and I'll put in some bass as well. Ooh, for the boys. Ooh, for the altos. Ooh, for the sopranos. One, two, a one, two, three, four. week because that chord structure, that chord structure is what this whole piece is based on. And those, that, that harmonic bit that I've taught you there, that you didn't even need to look at the copy to know what you were doing, because you can learn it by ear and you can learn it um, off by heart. Once you've got that nailed, everything else will feel easy, no matter how complicated it is, because you've got that instilled as the foundation of your work. Okay? So, before I turn off the recording camera and turn us over to social time, does anyone have any questions? Brilliant. Please get that learnt off by heart and in tune. And for the recording camera, I will say thank you very much. See you next week. <laughs>